how to become a podcast legend. Uh, my name is Stanley. I am the host of the Talking Raven podcast. And uh, we're super pumped to be able to have this conversation with you all about what we've discovered over the last year or so uh, going into the podcast world. As you all probably know, um, podcasting has become a, a huge part of our culture in the last five years. And so we want to be part of, of the culture and we also be part of, uh, of your audio experience and, and hopefully help you discover uh, what Carlton is all about. So speaking of which, I think it's important we, we begin uh, by uh, acknowledging our location. Uh, Carlton University acknowledges the location of its campus on the traditional unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. Uh, one of the really uh, great things we've done uh, since the beginning of the pandemic is to really put a focus on uh, our location and, and what it means and, and what our history is and, and again, who the land belongs to. And uh, I think it's been really great to, uh, to uh, acknowledge that and to have it become part of our daily conversations as we look to uh, reconciliation and look to making uh, our community and our country uh, a more welcoming place for all. So I'm um, very happy that we can uh, we can start with that acknowledgement. And, uh, and again, very happy to have you all here and extremely happy to uh, welcome uh, my co-creator, uh, um, the world of the brains and the talent behind the Talking Raven, uh, the one and only Briar Cook. Briar, how about you introduce yourself to the uh, audience? Thanks, Stanley. Hi, everyone. My name is Briar, and I am the Digital Content and Communications Coordinator for Carleton University's Undergraduate Recruitment Office. Um, and like Sten said, I am the editor and the co-creator of the Talking Raven podcast. Uh, I'm also a really proud Carleton grad. I graduated from the Bachelor of Journalism program with a minor in Communication and Media Studies back in 2019. So uh, working on the Talking Raven has been a really fun endeavor and I'm really excited that we get to take you through um, kind of our creative process today. So with that being said, to get started, we have broken it down to the basics and what we are calling the four steps to podcast success. Now this presentation won't be a technical um, production guide on how to use editing softwares or anything like that, but we will teach you the basics of podcast content creation and hopefully inspire you to create your own or at least start thinking about what you would wanna create. So our four steps that we're going to take you through are brainstorm, record, edit, and inspire. And we're going to look at these a little bit more closely. And Stanley is going to start us off with a uh, brainstorm. Yeah, thanks, Briar. So yeah, every every great idea has a beginning. You know, you had an idea of attending university and, uh, and that's kind of brought you to uh, this part of your journey where you're hopefully uh, getting geared up to, uh, to attend Carleton or, or whatever post-secondary institution you're looking forward to uh, in the fall. Uh, for us, uh, for our podcast, uh, we feel like the, the journey began with our purpose. And, and that was really our, our kind of our first question. I think it's the first question you're gonna want to ask yourself if you are going into uh, the podcast world is, uh, what's your purpose? What's the reason behind uh, this new uh, venture that you're going into? For some folks, their purpose is to just express themselves creatively. And this is another creative outlet that they can utilize to do that. For us, our purpose was to give our future Ravens another outlet uh, to connect with us, you know, and we're, we're really proud of the work we've done in recruitment uh, with our presentations, our information sessions, our one-on-one -on -one, uh, appointments where you can really talk to us about what you're thinking about uh, with regards to your post-secondary choices. Uh, but this was gonna be an opportunity for us to really introduce you to the Carlton community in a different manner and allow you to hear from different places, different faces or, or voices in, in our case um, uh, throughout the podcast, uh, both um, faculty, staff, as well as our student voices that we really want to amplify because at the end of the day, um, they are the, the heartbeat of our institution. So think about your purpose. Uh, and then what you wanna think about is your audience. Who in the world is going to listen to you talk? Uh, for 15, 20, 30, maybe an hour long uh, podcast uh, episode. So think about who your audience is going to be. Uh, I knew that we were on the right track uh, when my mom listened to our Thanksgiving uh, episode and said, well, Stan, that, that was really good uh, because my mom isn't really a, a podcast person per se, uh, but she is someone that is interested in discovering new things and, and, and discovering what universities are doing, being that 
you know, I, I work in, in this, in this um, arena. And so I, I knew that, that she was a good barometer for knowing if we were kind of um, speaking the right language for our audience. And our audience is comprised of obviously students that are thinking about university, parents that want to know more about the, the universities that uh, their, their child or their student is going to be attending. Uh, and so we identified those groups as the, the folks that we wanted to attract. And, and one of the cool things that happens with an audience is that, that audience can multiply on its own. So someone listens to your podcast, they love it. And all of a sudden, they'll tell their friends or their colleagues or whoever else, hey, you should check this out. You might be into it as well. And, and that can create that organic growth. So think about who you want to be listening to, uh, to your podcast. Uh, that will go a long way. And then planning is really important too. You know, it's one thing to have your purpose and another thing to think about who's going to listen. But then you actually want to flesh out that idea and think about how you're going to deliver it. You know, some podcasts that you listen to, uh, it's more of an interview format where they're, you know, interviewing a, a guest or somebody else. Others have more of a conversational style where a group of friends or colleagues will, you know, record their conversation centered on a topic or two. Uh, others might be about news, you know, and what's happening in the world today. So really kind of plan out what your episodes are going to be like? Are they going to be linked? Or are they going to be individual episodes? That's going to help you really find your rhythm and, and understand your point A, your point B, and, and all the points in between as well. Um, Briar, maybe you can talk a bit about um, the tone of a podcast, because I think that's a huge part uh, of the uh, brainstorming and the, and the content as well. Yeah, for sure. So for tone, I think the thing I really want to stress is that when you're creating content, you want to make sure that the podcast content you're creating is accessible to your audience. Um, so for example, every two weeks when we've been creating content for our audience of future Carleton students or future Ravens, we have to remember that the folks listening may have never physically been to campus. Um, so they may not have all of the Ravens insider knowledge yet. And we really want to convey that tight knit campus community feel through the tone of our podcast. And then as for the structure, we took a look at our own favorite podcasts and we drew inspiration um, when we were you know, making the Talking Raven. And we felt like what worked best for us in terms of structure was to have one segment that was purely informative and two that were feature interviews. Um, but there are a million and one ways to structure a podcast. So my biggest piece of advice is just to mimic the format of podcasts that you're already enjoying. Now, I just want to remind everyone that um, first, the session is being recorded, um, but two, that we want to hear from you. So uh, if anything that we're saying is, you know, uh, triggering or prompting you to, to express something, please express it in the chat. We're more than happy to uh, take some of your questions on the fly. And then we may have a few questions at the end of, of our little session here uh, to help you kind of uh, engage in that conversation. So please definitely utilize the chat if you have any thoughts that you want to share um, with us. Um, okay, so let's talk a bit about um, recording uh, the podcast. And uh, first off, equipment. So um, what I have is this mic. I don't know if you can see it. It's a it's a pile uh, USA mic that I got on Amazon. Of course, there are a lot of different microphones that are available, but you definitely want a mic uh, in order to uh, speak in and, and record your audio. Um, ideally, um, if you have guests or other folks, um, they'll have a similar kind of podcast type mic on the other end. That's not always possible, um, but uh, if they do have that, that'd be really great. Uh, and then we also utilize um, for our, section, our segments, uh, the ones that were kind of, uh, I guess, solo segments, like our intro or our outro, uh, we recorded that on uh, Adobe Audition. So that's what we utilize uh, to record. Uh, and then the other ones, to make it easier, we recorded it on, on Zoom or MS Teams. So when we had our guests on, being that, of course, the pandemic, and we weren't able to record in person, face to face. So we use those uh, platforms as our recording tool. Um, Adobe Audition does usually come with a cost, a subscription cost, but there are other free platforms that are available as well. Audacity is a really good one that um, a lot of people use uh, to record their podcasts too. Um, speaking of software, uh, Briar, do you have anything else you want to add to the software component? Yeah, just that podcasting doesn't need to be you know, necessarily an expensive endeavor. You don't even really need to start with a mic and any sort of paid audio equipment if you don't want to. Um, when I was a journalism student, 
I use the voice memo app on my phone. A lot of you have an iPhone, it comes with it. Um, and for all of the interviews that Sten records um, with our guests, he uses Teams and Zoom, and those both work great. The audio on them is, you know, easy to edit. Um, and you probably already have them if you're using them for school or work. So with that, I'm going to take us to edit, which is our third step. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the kind of software component that I use for the editing process. So once again, like I said, editing is a personal choice. You by no means need to edit a podcast um, that you're creating. But um, one way that you could do it if you wanted to have minimal editing is, like I mentioned before, you could create a Zoom or a Teams meeting with someone you'd like to interview. You could press start recording and you could chat away. Um, and then at the beginning and the end, you can use any sort of free software like Audacity, which is a free audio editing software online, or iMovie to um, you know, fade in the beginning or the end of the uh, session that you're recording. Um, just to make things a little bit more clean for the Talking Raven podcast, like Stanley said, I use Adobe Audition. Um, I spend quite a few hours a week editing it, uh, which is, and Adobe Audition is a paid software um, that's a bit more technical, but it does allow me to do things like um, split different clips and overlap them with each other and work on a few different files at once. So I really like that. But once again, it is a paid software. Um, and then in terms of editing styles, Finding your editing style and rhythm can be challenging if you do choose to take the more um, technical approach to editing. But typically what I do is I draw inspiration from the podcasts that I like and I see how they're incorporating things like music and sound effects. And then I refer to my trusting, trusty editing companion, which is YouTube, um, which I personally believe is the best uh, tool for learning to use any creative software from scratch. So I began learning editing techniques on Adobe Audition when I was a third year Carleton journalism student taking radio classes. Um, but by the time we started doing the Talking Raven, I needed a serious refresher. Um, and so still to this day, whenever I don't know how to do something, I just refer to YouTube videos. You can find basically uh, instructions on how to do anything and everything on that, on that platform. Um, and then Sten can talk a little bit about the music that we use. For sure, yeah. And I, I just also mentioned that, you know, some people ask me, do you do your podcast on your own? And I am so thankful that I, that I don't <laughs> because the editing part is really like, like Briar said, like she puts hours into editing. And so that's something you really want to be aware of. And it's a lot more fun when you do with other people. So if you are thinking about launching your own podcast and, and if you don't have those editing skills, uh, YouTube is great. Um, but having a friend that can help you is, is even better. So definitely do that. Um, yeah, the music. So our intro song is actually an original um, song uh, created by um, by a friend of mine and myself. We have our own kind of music group that we started during the pandemic. It's a long story, but um, but we use this sound, this clip, and it just really fit um, the tone that we wanted for the podcast. Like really kind of happy, conversational. You're about to have a really great moment with uh, with a few new friends. Uh, that was kind of the tone of, of the sound. So we were super happy that we were able to use that. And again, you want to think about how that music uh, really kind of sets your listener up for an experience. And so we hope that when you heard those kind of keys at the beginning, it put you in that mood of like, hey, I, I really want to like jam out with, with Carlton for a few minutes. So um, so yeah, we're super happy that we're able to have some original sounds. And uh, and then we add, added some more sounds that, that Briar could talk about uh, with the sound effects portion. Yeah, so I'll just go back to music for a quick second. So um, if you're, you know, not a super musical person and you don't want to create your own original music, uh, one of uh, the best platforms that I've used for copyright free music in the past is this website called um, Purple Planet Music, I believe. If you just Google it, it um, it's a website that brings you to, there are loads of um, like jingles and different songs on the platform. You can find one that's basically aligned with any sort of tone that, um, you know, you want to have for your podcast, intro, outro, whatever you want to use the music for. And then as for sound effects, a lot of sound effects um, already exist within editing, editing software. So uh, Adobe Audition, I believe Audacity as well has loads of sound effects. Um, so let's say you uh, want to incorporate the sound of a basketball swoosh. If you just search swoosh or basketball, um, there's almost always something that will come up and you can incorporate that little audio bit into your uh, podcast. Um, and uh, yeah, there are also a ton of sound effects that you can pull from 
uh, different video editing softwares as well, if you want to work on one of those. So like iMovie, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, different things like that. So now we're going to head into the last step, which is Inspire. And Stanley's going to start us off with this one. Yes, yeah, and and I, I love I love the word inspire because you know that's that's what we wanted to do is inspire you to really dig deep into your journey, into your university journey, and to also uh, dig deep into our community and what what Carlton is all about and why you would want to uh, to join us. Um, one of the big parts about uh, a podcast is you want it to go out to people, and so you need to publish it. Um, what we use to publish our podcast is uh, Anchor. Uh, it's a, a free kind of a hosting site um, uh, created by um, Spotify. And so uh, through Anchor, we're able to not only upload our audio file and create kind of like our, I guess, our hub for our podcast, but then distribute it to all the different platforms. So obviously Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play, and so on. So that was a really easy, um, inexpensive way to do so. Now, if you're thinking about monetizing, like if you have like this dream of becoming the next really big podcast and, and make some money out of it, there is an option to do that, to kind of advertise a bit more on, on Anchor, um, or there are other hosting platforms you can utilize that, you know, with a fee or for a fee, you can get a bit more traffic from that perspective. Um, so uh, we're pretty lucky uh, at Carlton to have um, other outlets that are available to uh, advertise, uh, including uh, Briar's digital skills. So Briar, tell us about uh, Instagram, Twitter, everything that, that you do that helps you uh, bring some traffic to the Talking Raven. Yeah, for sure. So I think when it comes to marketing a podcast, um, marketing can really be anything from texting your friends. In Stanley's case, it was texting his mom <laughs> and uh, let her know what we were doing uh, to using your own personal social media platforms, whether you have your own personal account, you have a business account. Um, and then you can go as far as to using um, paid platforms like Facebook Business Manager on Facebook and Instagram to uh, actually promote your content and get a little bit more reach and engagement. But uh, I think it's all really about how much reach and engagement you're ultimately striving for. It's, you know, whether you just want to create it for yourself as a, you know, a passion project, that's awesome. But if you want to go out there and, you know, be a professional podcaster, there are also a ton of routes to do that as well. And those two things require, you know, vastly different marketing streams. Uh, so it's just really about how much of an impact you want to have. And I think that's something that you should really think about if you're, you know, planning on pursuing this. Uh, and I think Sten's going to take us through the last three points. Yeah, and, and I think what you just said is, is really important because I think uh, one of the lessons I learned was, you know, even though it's a, a work podcast, I think there's a lot of benefit to using your, your own kind of network to get the word out because you never know like who in your network has like a family member or again, a friend or, or a colleague that might benefit from, from this type of podcast. So, so like Briar said, like, you know, uh, don't be afraid to utilize your resources that you have at your disposal uh, to uh, to um, really promote your your podcast um, and then to get feedback from those people. And I think that's the, the best part of, of creating a, a passion project is be able to share that passion and then receive some of that kind of uh, feedback that that reaction uh, from your audience. And it could be good, great, um, constructive, bad, whatever it may be, you know, getting that feedback can be super helpful. It helped us a lot uh, when we got feedback from, from students that were listening to the podcast and suggested different topics that they wanted us to cover. Like that really helped us uh, kind of uh, set a direction of the podcast too. So uh, feedback is a, a huge part of growth. Um, uh, and that's something we're gonna touch on in a second. Um, but we also want you to take the time and what you should do is take the time to reflect throughout your podcasting journey. And, and, I, and I should kind of mention that it depends on your style too. Like there are some folks that will create uh, like all their episodes uh, within a period of time and then release them as they go along. Uh, what we were able to do is plan out our first semester of podcast episodes. And then after every recording, we would get feedback and then that can then split into or feed into our future recordings. And then when we thought about our second semester, again, we had this kind of um, uh, experience where we can tap into and reflect on and say, all right, well, here's what we thought worked, what didn't work. Here's kind of the, the, the tone and the, the pacing that we should really kind of explore in our, in our second semester or the second half of our, of our season. And so taking that moment to actually reflect on, on your, your podcast and go back to, again, your purpose, your audience, and so on. 
uh, that can help you to recenter your pod. Uh, and then growth, um, you know, both your growth as a podcaster, I feel like, you know, uh, as a, uh, I guess as a host, I change throughout the season, at least I think I change throughout the season. I know um, Briar could talk a bit about her editing uh, skills and styles and how that may have changed uh, throughout the year as well, but growth is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just say that I've I've gotten a lot faster at uh, <laughs> editing the different clips, and now that uh, you know Stanley and I have a bit of a rhythm in terms of um, the content he's giving me and the time that it's taking me to edit it, I you know I know a lot of shortcuts. I've watched a lot of uh, YouTube videos, and I know I can basically um, by the time we are in the planning stage assess how much time it's going to take me ultimately to edit it and uh, send it back to him so he can publish it on all of the platforms. Mm -hmm. and, and I should also mention, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like with, if you play sport, it's like, you know, the idea of you want to be really good at something right away, that rarely happens, right? It does take time and repetition and, and trial and error to really kind of find who you are in that particular space. Uh, and then kind of use that to continuously grow into uh, the <clears throat> more re kind of reformed uh, version of yourself, not a better or worse, but just like a, a maybe a differently polished or different kind of uh, output of yourself. So um, growth is definitely a big part of it. Um, Briar, it's time for us to hear from, from our audience because I think they're hopefully chomping at the bit to, to uh, ask us some stuff. So I know you you put up, put up some... Um, some questions that we wanted to ask. So how about you lead us through that? Yeah, for sure. Before I take them to the questions though, I just want to take them through one more slide, um, which is just like a little podcast starter kit that I created just uh, for anyone who's interested in creating their own podcast. So quickly, just as a little recap before we get into our discussion questions that Stanley is going to uh, start us off with. Um, now that we've touched on our four steps to recap everything, uh, in our starter kit, the first thing that you'll need um, are the device or the devices that you will use to do your recording, editing, um, whether that just be an iPhone or like Stanley said, a mic, uh, recording tools, software to edit. You're just gonna want to assess your physical resources, your, you know, the tools that you have at disposal. Um, second, you're gonna need to find your own creative inspiration. So whenever I'm having a creative block, my ritual um, tends to be to go for a quick walk and to listen to content that I know I'll enjoy. So one of the best tidbits of advice that I've ever heard is that the best creators copy. And now you obviously should not go out and plagiarize your favorite <laughs> podcaster. Um, but there's nothing wrong with mimicking the format format of something that is already, you know, really resonating with you. Um, or looking for discussion topics or themes um, or trends that your favorite podcasters are already, you know, using. My other favorite piece of creative advice um, that may sound a little bit cheesy, but I've used kind of as a consistent dose of inspiration throughout this creative process is that sometimes when you're creating something from scratch, it's like running a faucet that hasn't been turned on in a really long time. So the water will be initially super murky, um, but with time it will run clear. And in the same way, sometimes you have to create some really bad content before your work is aligned with your vision. And it's actually something that you're proud of. So then uh, you're going to, once your content is created, you're going to want to have a feedback buddy. So that is my third piece to my po podcast starter kit. So Stanley and I, when we've been creating the Talking Raven, we've, um, you know, consistently bounced ideas off of each other. Um, and I think one really good thing about having a feedback buddy is you want to find someone who's, you know, acting in good faith, who, um, you know, has the best intentions uh, for the work at heart. So um, with Stanley, we are constantly bouncing ideas off of each other. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, one of us will find the other's ideas a little bit outlandish, and we're totally comfortable telling each other when we think we could do maybe a little bit better, right? So that is where that feedback buddy comes into play. And then that's, lastly- That's Briar's polite way of saying, <laughs> hey, sometimes Stanley has these like far out ideas, and I've got to reel them in a little bit. And and ground them in the reality of our podcast. So thank you for being polite about that, Briar. <laughs> I, you know what? I do the same all the time. I think that if you're, you know, a creative, idealistic person, you want to create the best content possible. And there's nothing wrong with um, having ideas that are a little bit out there. <laughs> um, so lastly, the last piece of my podcast starter kit is if you want to create a podcast, like I said, for yourself, and you just want to do it as a passion project, and you are the only person that is going to listen to it, go for it. 
But if you want others to listen, you're going to want to get onto a platform like Anchor, um, like Stanley talked about, and you're going to want to publish from Anchor, um, for example, to all of the major podcast streaming platforms like uh, Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for my podcast starter kit. And now we're going to launch into our first discussion question. So feel free to utilize the chat and, uh, oh. And Briar, I should, I should just quickly, uh, because there was a question in, in the chat that um, was asked about uh, my mic. So the question is, uh, what's the name of that microphone? I read it, I read about, sure, uh, maybe it's expensive. Um, so again, the mic that I'm using is a pileusa.com. We got, I got it on Amazon. It was about 150 bucks. Um, I think Yeti is like the, the go-to most kind of popular microphone for, for podcasters. So that's something that you can also look into, but, but mine is uh, Pile USA is uh, the brand. Um, and we, we find that it works pretty well. Um, but if you go on Amazon, you can find a, a wide range of, of microphones that uh, that aren't too expensive. Uh, Best Buy has like uh, podcast starter kits as well. So you can look at Best Buy, Best Buy as well if you want to. Yeah, and there are a ton of like articles and listicles out there if you just Google like podcast software. Um, a ton of people have created these articles with all of, you know, comparing all of the different types of mics and all the different types of software. So it's really about, you know, what find, what um, works for you, your budget mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, what your intention is in creating something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our first discussion question. So feel free to jump in the chat, um, but let's talk about this. What podcasts do you listen to? So maybe we'll start with Stanley. What podcasts do you listen to? Yeah, okay, for sure. So um, so right now I, I listen to a lot of CBC podcasts. So like Front Burner, um, Pop Chats. Um, uh, uh, there's another one I forget. But my, my ultimate favorite one that I'm listening to right now is called uh, Dissect uh, Podcast. It's um, this uh, really great musician and, and music theory um, expert who goes through albums and literally kind of dissects every single uh, song uh, from the music to the lyrics to the content uh, and context of the album. Uh, I'm a huge Kanye West fan. So right now he's uh, dissecting Yeezus. So I'm, I'm just like every Tuesday I go for a walk and listen to it and just think like, oh my goodness, Cole, you are such a genius. So um, Briar, what are you listening to? Yeah, so I'm a news junkie, hence studying journalism at Carleton. Um, so I love uh, basically every podcast that is created by any news outlet. I'm a huge fan of the New York Times. So I love the daily. I listen to it every morning when I'm getting ready for work. Um, the arguments. Uh, they also do some really awesome like storytelling podcasts. So there's this one called Modern Love and it's just uh, usually like a public figure or a celebrity who reads out um, like an essay about or a love story that uh, people, everyday people will just submit. Um, and so I love, I love that. And like I said, I love like storytelling um, or just really good yeah, storytelling podcasts. So I also listen to uh, this American Life. And the one that I've been loving lately is um, actually a podcast that's created by Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. Um, they do a podcast called Sick Kids Versus, where they um, they basically just like go through what uh, they're doing at Sick Kids in terms of research. And I'm, you know, not someone who's ever had a huge interest in medicine or science, but um, the way that they, uh, they, you know, do the stories and they, they usually take you through um, you know, the, the medical journey of one of their patients. And uh, it's just a really inspiring podcast. So I'd recommend that one. And our our, uh, our chat is blowing up, which is great. Uh, we got a couple of recommendations here. Uh, we got one for Armchair Expert uh, by uh, Dax Shepard, pretty popular one. So definitely good one to look into. Uh, another mostly fiction podcast. I really love the Penumbra podcast, unless you pronounce it, uh, the Magnus Archives and Welcome to Night Vale. Um, we've got some that um, informational ones, and then we're getting this like connection that's happening to two students, which is awesome. Um, one person said, uh, self-help and motivational thought-provoking podcast, because unlike books, if they turn out disappointing, that's not a, a lot of, not a lot of your hours <laughs> wasted. Uh, very kind of a funny take on that. Uh, and other podcasts here, Ologies, Two Hot Takes, and This American Life. Um, so um, really cool podcasts that are there and awesome to see the connection that's happening as well in the chat. So, um, so that makes me very, very happy. 
Yeah, I love all of those answers. And you know, what's funny. I don't think I've ever listened to a fiction podcast. Mm -hmm. So now I'm inspired. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll seek some of those out next time. I I typically listen to the nonfiction ones. Yeah, that's a good point. I like that. Someone else said folklore, fictional, and I love radio play. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Okay. So the next podcast chat discussion piece that we have is what do you look for in a podcast? So Stanley, do you want to start again? Sure. Yeah. So what do I look for? Well, it, it, a lot. Um, some podcasts <laughs> I'm looking for uh, entertainment. Uh, I just like to, to hear people have engaging, uh, awesome, hilarious conversations. Uh, one podcast I listen to is called um, Higher Learning. It's with Van Jones and um, Rachel Lindsay from the Bachelorette fame. And, um, and so they talk about a lot of different con- uh, uh, topics, but most of it is really just him, them like laughing together and having like hilarious conversations. So I, I look for that sometimes. Other times I'm looking to get uh, a different take on the, on the news um, and understanding what's happening in the world so I can be uh, somewhat you know, smart in my conversations or at least appear to be knowledgeable in my conversations. And then others is to really kind of uh, reinforce whatever feelings I might have about an artist or about a particular uh, piece of, of art. Um, and so, uh, again, the Dissect podcast is really feeding into my, my Kanye ego. So um, that's what I look for. What about you, Briar? Yeah, so when I was thinking about an answer to this question, um, I think I was like a little bit more uh, like practical in how I was thinking about it. So when I am going to look for a podcast, almost always the first thing that I look for is how long the podcast is. Interesting. <laughs> um, so I typically look for podcasts that are between uh, 20 minutes and an hour because anything less than that um, just like I don't want to say isn't worth my time because there are a ton of you know short form podcasts out there I'm sure that are super informative and awesome um, but typically when I, I do turn on a podcast it's because I'm either uh, you know cleaning my apartment or sitting down to get some work done or cooking lunch or cooking dinner and so it's usually when I have like a good chunk of time and I just want to have something on in the background maybe want to learn something um but yeah, so I would say anything between 20 minutes and an hour. Um, and then it really just depends on what I'm doing. So if I am uh, working, sometimes I'll have on, uh, you know, CBC podcast or like a CBC podcast on in the background, just because I, I just kind of, you know, want to know what's going on in the world and in, in Ottawa um, during the day. And if anything really piques my curiosity, usually I will be like, oh, and then I'll, you know, stop what I'm doing and listen for a second, but it's not something that requires my undivided attention during the day. You know, I can just have it on in the background and it's something nice to listen to. Um, so, you know, something a little bit more relaxed. Um, but then when I'm, I'm doing something where I have a little bit more time to focus, like, you know, maybe going for a walk or cooking dinner, that's when I tend to listen to um, the more kind of like entertaining, uh, relatable storytelling podcasts. Right. Do you, do you, are you a one, a one, um, a one sitting listener? Like if you start a podcast, you have to finish it in that one sitting, or can you go back to an episode like a day or two later? You know, what's really funny, um, is that it, I think it really depends because, uh, with, so I listen to the, the New York times, the daily every day when I'm getting ready for work. Um, and I almost never finish the episodes. There's almost always like five minutes left. Mm -hmm. So sometimes at the end of the week, it'll be like a Friday night and I'm, you know, just kind of settling down for the weekend. I will, um, put on the day's episode. And then I realize I have like 25 minutes of unfinished podcast content (laughs) from the last week. And then it's like getting a whole other podcast. That's, oh, that's a good idea actually. Kind of put them all together like that. That's kind of cool. So, but then it's um, like, does it like throw you off? Because you're like, wait, what are you talking about now again? Oh, right. This yeah. is from Tuesday. No, it does. It does a lot. But, um, you know, some information is better than no information. And I guess, you know, it doesn't really matter when you're taking it in, as long as you are taking it in. That's right. We've Let's got some really good feedback said. in here. So um, one person said, uh, engaging and relatable hosts. And that was kind of, a, I think, a reoccurring theme in the feedback. Uh, somebody else mentioned uh, something that's entertaining or will make me laugh, relatable host. I need to get real in within the first five minutes. Otherwise, I can't stick with this. So the fact that you're still here with us 
means that we hopefully reeled you in in the first five minutes and, and you're enjoying this session. Um, casual and conversational, I find it more fun and engaging when it's not too scripted or formal. Feels like having a friend around. Yeah, I, I like that too. I like the idea of, of you know, jumping into a conversation that you would be a part of in kind of the quote unquote real world. Um, uh, thought provoking, personal experiences, entertaining. Um, someone agrees with you, Briar. Uh, sometimes uh, if it's for background noise, definitely conversational storytelling, but other times I like them quick, snappy and to the point. Uh, people with voices that aren't annoying. <laughs> that, that's one of the things that you recognize when you're recording yourself is no one likes to hear their own voices on a recording. So you don't know if your voice is, is yeah, annoying, uh, but, but really you have to recognize like an audience, like your voice is pleasurable or, in, or entertaining to someone. So somebody out there will like to hear you talk. And so, um, and sometimes they talk too much. Uh, so that's probably my problem is I talk too much. Um, I, I skip <laughs> one intentionally because uh, I think it's a good conversation for us to have. Uh, it seems all the cable news people have podcasts now when did this explosion of podcasts begin? Briar, put on your journalism hat. Give us a little bit of history, if you can, about when this recent boom of podcasts, in your mind, kind of really started to explode. That is a question that I can't answer with data or statistics or facts. Um, but from my own personal experience, <laughs> The reason I started listening to podcasts was because I was a journalism student who had news quizzes every week. And I realized that, um, you know, sometimes when you're writing papers, you're in the middle of exams, you, uh, you know, you're just like reading and taking in a lot of content. Sometimes you just want another format to, you know, to get into information or to cram information into your brain. Um, and so I found podcasts, um, especially like the CBC podcasts, the New York Times, uh, from different uh, news outlets had really great informative podcasts that could kind of give me a sense of what was going on in the world um, so that I could not only be informed, but also really, uh, you know, nail my news quizzes of the week. So mm -hmm. that's when I started listening. That was probably about five years ago that I started listening to podcasts on um, maybe not a daily basis, but at least a few times a week. But it's so true. I think, um, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of people have realized that, um, you know, people are just in different settings. Maybe they're working from home. Um, maybe they are still commuting if they're essential workers. And, uh, you know, people are just taking in information in so many different ways. So um, news outlets especially have just have, I'm sure, uh, found that it's it's been a great way to get content across to, you know, a new audience that might not have read the news as much. Yeah, and I think, uh, and, and there's a really great comment here. I also find that podcasts are a lot more diverse than TV sometimes because literally anyone can make them. So I always look for something queer or made by women or people of color. And, and it's a really great point. And I think that's what's happened in the last five, five or to seven years is, um, you know, as we've seen with social media, it's given us an opportunity to access different voices that maybe weren't always highlighted uh, through traditional uh, forms of communication. And so I think that's part of what, what created this boom is uh, people wanted to see themselves or hear themselves reflected throughout their, their media. And, uh, and literally anyone has access to, you know, if you have a voice and you have a space and a place to kind of uh, express yourself, then uh, the, the podcast world is a great world to be in. So, um, so I think that's a really good point. And I think Brian, your, your timeline, though not scientific is probably exactly right so let's go with five years ago okay <laughs> five years ago it is <laughs> okay so we'll go to the next question and it's our last one and that is describe your perfect podcast co-host so stanley um who is it and why is it kanye west <laughs> oh gosh I, I was supposed to think about this one and i haven't really given it <laughs> enough thought um i think I, I, it wouldn't be Kanye just because I think I, I would be a really bad co-host because I would just be like, yes, I agree with everything you're saying. Um, I, I think someone like, um, I mean, I, I love Rashida Jones. So someone like Rashida Jones would be really cool because she's funny. She can think on her on her feet. She is uh, uh, knowledgeable. Um, she's re very, very relatable too. Um, and then she was in one of my favorite TV shows, Parks and Recreation. And so I think we could just, oh, now I think of it. Uh, Rashida Jones would be great, um, but um, um, 
Leslie Nope. Oh my gosh, who played Leslie Nope on Parks and Rec? Um, Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler would be yeah. the best co-host of all time. Briar? Um, I agree. I love the Amy Poehler idea. When I was thinking about this, I, you know, I think a part of me wants to say like, you know, my favorite public figures, celebrities, but it's the same thing. Like, I don't know if I'd want to necessarily co-host a podcast with them as much as just, you know, like spend some time chatting with them and kind of like uh, delve into their brain and what they're thinking. So I would say that my perfect podcast co-host at this time in my life is probably someone who is 10, 20, 30 years older than me, um, you know, professionally who I could, uh, you know, just, uh, be in their presence and ask advice from. And, uh, yeah, the one person who, um, I was thinking about when I was trying to answer this question was Brene Brown. I already listened mm -hmm. to her podcast. It's called unlocking us. She's a, uh, professor, social worker, um, just all around awesome person. And she, um, I believe is a, a researcher as well. And she studies things like empathy and guilt and just, um, you know, things about humanity and the human experience. And I think it'd be so cool just to ask her um, philosophical life questions and, uh, you know, get advice from her. Yeah, I dig that a lot. I had this idea for a podcast a couple of years ago. I was going to call it Stanley, the expert. And, and the idea was to have on every episode, a different expert from whatever topic we're covering, because I'm not necessarily um, researched in a lot of different areas, but I have opinions on a lot of different things. And so to have someone who's actually researched and knowledgeable in a, in a conversation would really, I think, amplify and, and help to set a, a better kind of direction to it. Um, and uh, there's a comment in the chat, someone who I can get along with bounce ideas off of and is entertaining. Maybe someone who isn't too similar to me so the audience can hear from two different uh, points of views. And yeah, that's a really great point is to have you know, that balance, you know, cause yeah, you're right. You don't want to have that same tone across your podcast. And so you want to get some type of, it's like music, right? You want the rhythm to switch, um, but to still keep you on the dance floor, if you will. So um, yeah, I, I like that point a lot. Yeah, and I really like what you said too about, um, Oh my gosh, what did you just say? I said I that say? my podcast is going to be called Stanley, comma, the yeah. expert. <laughs> I was just going to say that the really awesome thing about podcasts too is that um, it gives basically everyone access to all of the expertise in the world. You know, like mm -hmm. you can search a podcast. If sometimes I'm just curious about, um, you know, during COVID-19 COVID is a, a, a great example. If you want to hear from uh, epidemiologists or scientists who are, you know, working on the front lines of the pandemic, it's been a great way to actually hear their, um, their voices and their perspectives on, on what's going on and, and, you know, how things are going to change, hopefully for the better. So, yeah, I think, I think it's, and what you're saying is exactly it. I think that's why for us, it was organic to think about a podcast within a university setting, because, you know, in a university, you're gaining access to your, to your professors who are, experts in their fields and so a podcast kind of gives you a, a sampling or a, an inkling as to what you might want to do a deeper dive into and then when you get to university your your lectures your classrooms are going to be like live podcasts where you're going to have different types different styles different tones but ultimately the idea is to help you kind of develop your own thought your own you know kind of uh, research your own ideas and and designs and so university really is this really cool kind of merging of what's happening in the digital space, uh, both from a, a, a practical or a, a or tangible way, but also that the theory and the philosophy of these digital outlets is really kind of uh, trying to duplicate what, what we're doing in university, which is knowledge uh, acquisition, knowledge creation, and world building, I think is a big part of, of a university. Um, there was a comment here, thinking about idols in movies and sports. It would be very cool to reach out and get some of them into a podcast. So many things possible. Oh, I love, I love that idea. It'd be so dope to like be able to have your like, like an idol podcast and, and somehow convince these really great people to sit down with you and just kind of talk about their impact on your life. Maybe um, how they perceive their, their fans and stuff like that. I think that's a really cool I might steal that idea. Not steal, <laughs> obviously not. No, I won't do that. Uh, but I think I would listen to your podcast if you decide to do that. So, so I think uh, continue with that thought process. Yeah, um, and I also love too that um, that Connor said that because 
the one thing that I realized from being a journalism student and having to, you know, interview a ton of different experts on different topics is that sometimes those people who you deem as idols and not like I'm not talking about like Ryan Reynolds, Taylor Swift, like A-list celebrities or anything like that, but sometimes the people who you think of as idols, you know, maybe professionally or even like local or provincial um you know, politicians or anyone who you're, you know, interested in their, in their point of view, those people are a lot of the times quite accessible through mm -hmm. different social media platforms via email. It's actually not that difficult to connect with a lot of these people. Um, you know, of course, if they want to be connected with, <laughs> um, sure. but uh, yeah, there's no harm in, in reaching out to someone. If you have a really awesome idea and you want to conduct an interview. Um, yeah, for sure. I remember uh, I was at an event uh, two, two years ago, three years ago, uh, time, what is time now? Um, and Mikael Jean was there, who was our former governor general uh, of Canada. And I, I, I was at first, I was hesitant to approach her because it's Mikael Jean. But then I thought, no, like, like she's at this event, I'm here too, like, let's have a conversation. And we did. And she, you know, in, indulged me in that combo and took a picture with me and stuff. And it was just really great to like humanize um, her in, in that way. And and know that you know, although there are certain people that may seem unattainable, um, they're they're regular people at the end of the day, you know. And so, like you said, Briar, it's it's uh, it's good to shoot your shot when you get the opportunity to do so. And and to think about locally, like who are the people that are making an impact in your community, and and they're usually more than happy to to engage with the members of that community. And so um, there's there's definitely um, some great potential there for sure. Awesome. So if there are no other comments, I think we're probably going to end the discussion here. Do you have anything else to say, Sten? Uh, other than nothing uh, other than like, this is a lot of fun. And thank you to everyone for, uh, for both attending and for participating in the chat and, and, uh, and for sharing your, your thoughts with us. And, and uh, you know, let's keep this conversation going. Like we say uh, in Carlton Recruitment World, um, we have a, a website where if you haven't listened to the podcast yet, um, you can definitely check us out uh, at missions.carlton.ca slash the Talking Raven podcast. So give us a listen, give us your feedback, help us grow all the things we talked about. And, uh, you know, from a marketing perspective, we are on Instagram and on Twitter and Facebook at Carlton underscore future. Briar is our uh, digital expert. And so all that cool content you're seeing on on Instagram, especially uh, Briar is, is driving that train. And so uh, definitely give us a follow. And uh, most importantly, let us know if you have any questions at all, uh, give us a shout. Uh, thank you for the feedback that's coming into the chat. We really appreciate it. And um, yeah, let us know, give us a, a, a shout, uh, email us. Um, you can um, schedule a meeting with us as well. If you're thinking about your application or anything like that, we're of course here to help. And then the last thing I will say is, um, uh, today's session is part of our See You at Home um, series, and uh, we are still um, offering some re really great content uh, online over the next couple of days, including a huge celebration party that's going to be happening at 4 p.m. Eastern time this Friday uh, on Instagram Live. So if you're not following us, again, follow us on Carlton underscore future and join us for the fun. There may be prizes. There may be some guest appearances. Maybe Mikhail Jean will show up. Who knows? Um, probably not, but uh, definitely uh, join us on Instagram Live for that big celebration. And um, and yeah, thank you all for attending. Briar, do you have any last uh, kind of parting words for our audience? Just thank you so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, we're super excited to continue making the Talking Raven podcast. And we're really excited to see um, what you folks decide to create. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much.